In the book The War of the Worlds by Herbert George Wells, the planet Earth is invaded and conquered by Martians, but after landing on the Earth, the invaders die from an unknown and invisible factor, a microbial infection from germs and bacteria of the air we breathe. We are not alone. The air we breathe is full of microorganisms. It's a whole biological system struggling for food and reproduction, struggling for its life. Our documents are affected by the following factors of this system. Funguses, bacteria, insects, and ink degradation. Many times, some of them attract the others, Hot weather and humidity favor the operation of fungus. Funguses are the food for many insects that love eating papers. Hot weather and humidity attract bacteria. Bacteria acidify documents, and these acids attract funguses and insects. Cellulose, as it's a timber residue, is a tasty food for termites. It's a biological chain of living beings trying to feed and survive at any expense, at expenses of our documents. There are more than 200 species of fungus which attack archives and libraries. The most known of them are the aspergilliums and the penicillium. They produce in papers rounded brown or yellow drops, which usually spread all around, infecting all the archives stored in the same place. Funguses reproduce by releasing teeny spores, which after their germination are ejected to the whole environment, floating in the air and landing over nutritional resources. They may remain in a state of anabiosis or latent life for many years. When heat and humidity contribute to germination, they grow, invading the paper surface. The recommended prevention against fungus germination is a cold environment, 50 to 70 degrees, and low humidity, less than 50%, although some species germinate with only a 10% of relative humidity. Also, it's important to have good air circulation. Once documents are infected, they must be brushed with a soft, smooth brush and, after that, disinfected with specific products. Bacteria are unicellular microorganisms of a size between a half and five micrometers. One micrometer is 1,000 of a millimeter. They are responsible of many infections and illnesses. They display a wide diversity of shapes and sizes, being the most familiar coccus, spherical shape, bacillus, rod shaped or spirillus, spiral shape. They are specially attracted by cellulose papers. Once installed, they produce acids causing degradations in inks and papers. They break the cellulose chemical chain, interrupting and destroying it. The consequence is fragile crack and inconsistent paper sheets. The most common of these bacteria in papers are Cytophaga and Cell Vibrium. Documents attacked by bacteria must be immediately disinfected. Common families of beetles on the places where documents are stored are the Anobidae. There are many species of them being the most frequent a wood eater called drugstore beetle or death clock, Stegobium panisium. This coleoptera of around one inch in length used to eat cellulose, piercing the paper and leaving small tunnel-shaped circular holes. 
when it finishes with a sheet, it goes to another one below, and it goes for more. One of the most important threads for documents is the silverfish, which belongs to the genus of Lepisma. It's a voracious bug and eats wood, cardboard and papers. It's between a half and one inch in length and is attracted by glues, gelatin of papers and photographs and the dust of the environment. It devours only the surface, not making tunnels, leaving irregular holes with no wastes around. Silverfish typically live for two to eight years. Termites can completely destroy a book or anything they want. It would be enough to say that to reach the wood, they pierce the concrete without any problem. They are classified as Neoptera, and are also called wide ants, although they don't have any kinship with ants. They like wooden book covers and, of course, the cellulose in papers. Besides of all of these infestations, papers are seriously damaged by inks degradation, especially the iron gall inks, which produce rust, discoloration, generating acids, and quickly destroying papers. An excess of humidity helps deterioration, and an environment with controlled humidity and temperature helps to stop the destructive action. The most ancient inks used by Chinese and Egyptians made with soot, gum arabic and isinglass are the best and most stable ones. They were in use in Europe until the 15th century. Since then they started to use the iron gall inks, a compound of iron sulfate, gallic acid and some agglutinant, in general gum arabic dissolved in water. Corrosion of paper observed in many handscripts with iron gall inks is precisely associated to its basic components. Printing inks, newspapers, lithography, offset, at contrary, are much more stable and permanent because they are dissolved into a watery and greasy composition which preserves them better. A document could be of public interest or it could only be important for us or our family. By this reason, we have to make periodical revisions of our documents. In case we find some problem, it's good to brush our documents with a smooth brush, removing mildew and bacteria. But this is not enough for serious infections. In that case, and to avoid that domestic procedures get this situation worse, it's recommendable to send sick documents to expert hands. When you consider you have important documents to be preserved and definitely your house conditions are not adequate, the bank's vaults in general have the ideal conditions for preservation of documents, stable and low temperature and humidity. Preservation or conservation means our struggle against a natural process. It's not an easy job, but when all the procedures and recommendations are carefully followed and documents are handled with care, we get quite better results. To preserve documents is to conserve our memory. And prevention is better than cure.